played and have fun. No time to wait. Open up your mind with marks, pencils, or paints. Hear what they have made. Savannah, Russell, and Jane with a podcast just for you. I almost got attacked by a squirrel. Oh my god, I thought you were about to say you almost got a tattoo. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> like, I do plan on getting a tattoo once uh, my book gets published. Like, I have a design that I want to do on my arm. I want to get a feather quill, wrap it around my forearm. That's cool. Yeah, super hipster of me. What? <laughs> Hi, Jay. Hi. Hi. How are you? You know, it's so funny you're talking about getting a tattoo because I actually just made an appointment to get a tattoo in October. Ooh. What yeah. is it? So a jellyfish. Tattoo. Oh, nice. <laughs> it was only a matter of time. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's a jellyfish <laughs> tattoo. I thought about getting Godzilla, but it's going to be a jellyfish. And I'm pretty excited. Do you know what a group of jellyfish is called? No. A smack. <laughs> really? Yeah. A group of jellyfish is called a smack course it is I would they're metal it, as fuck I would call it a joke. <laughs> how you been um i've been battling the ennui this week ah uh, yeah that's been fun i think i just needed a lot of sleep and just time to lay in bed for a while yeah yeah i think that's what i need because today i feel a lot better that's good so, yeah just it's, like hmm? it's like the weather change or something because i kind of felt like bleh mm-hmm. this week and also really stressed out. <laughs> so, how about you, Jade? How are you doing? I'm good. Um, just playing with my new paint that I sent you guys. The oh, yeah. 3.0. Yeah. yeah, pretty rad. I'm pretty excited. Like, I've already got kind of an idea of what I want to paint with it. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I'm pretty excited about that. That is exciting. Nice. Yeah, it's so matte. I'm so excited. <laughs> it looks like pictures don't do it justice. It looks so good in person. I absolutely feel that like pictures don't do it justice because like the like the character sketches that I've done that I've sent y'all every time I take a picture like there I take like five different pictures and I'm just like you can't see shit. <laughs> yeah, like it's so like like all. Ugh, ugh such a pain in the butt and and then I think about it I'm like I could go back and do like line art on these drawings but that also like scares the shit out of me (laughs) (laughs) like I don't want to do it what if I mess up and I mess up the entire thing like it's beautiful as is we'll just we're just gonna leave it move on (laughs) yeah so what's our topic this week velvet buzzsaw Uh warning there will be spoilers hi welcome to the fanbrush podcast (laughs) (laughs) Where we do our intros out of order every time. <laughs> yep. Uh, my name is Russell. I like art. My name is Savannah. I also like art. My name is Jade. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say I also like art. Woo! Yeah, so like, since this, uh, so when this episode is gonna be released, it's actually gonna be like our first uh, October, like month of October episode. Happy oh, Halloween. Yeah. yeah. So season. I thought it'd be really cool uh, to do like spooky themed episodes for the month of October. So this episode, the topic is going to be uh, this movie called Velvet Buzzsaw, which is like a kind of like an art horror movie that's on Netflix. Like it's a Netflix original. And uh, I've been wanting to watch it, but like I was kind of scared. <laughs> So I hadn't watched it, but then I was like, this is a good excuse to watch it because I know other people are going to be watching it. And Bryce watched it with me and (laughs) that's what we're going to be talking about. And but like, by the way, everybody who's listening, like it's like the whole thing is going to be spoilers, like the whole thing, like like it's a good movie. I'm telling you right now, me and Bryce both watched it. We loved it. So like watch it it. and then listen to this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. Go watch it and then come back so we can like all talk about it because that's what we're going to do. Like. And, and and I will say that this is one of those movies, like, 
especially if you hate spoilers, like go watch it first because like yes, I thought I thought it was really cool to watch it, not really knowing that much about it. Like I had seen the trailer, but don't even I, watch the trailer. Don't even watch the trailer. Well, that's Just true. go into it blind. You don't even need. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's, that's how I went into it. I didn't Same. look at the trailer. All I knew is that it was an art movie. That's li- like I didn't even. I don't even. I don't even think I realized it was supposed to be a scary movie until you told me that it was like like it was like a creepy movie and I was like oh okay so that's, <laughs> yeah. that's literally how I went into it I did like I didn't even know Jake Gyllenhaal was in it and so I went to go watch it and I was like is that Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> it sure the fuck is <laughs> <laughs> his haircut looks like crap <laughs> I know Jake Gyllenhaal does not look his best in this movie but he didn't in uh what's that other movie he did recently was it like Nightcrawler or something not Nightcrawler what was it no, Nightcrawler was like like the same team that did Nightcrawler did this one. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Oh, well, damn, I didn't know that. I thought those were like two completely separate entities. I didn't even look into it that, that deep. Uh, I, I kind of did because I also watched the, the movie earlier in the week on Tuesday whenever I had my day off. I was just like, I've got the day off. Nobody's home. I'll watch this like scary movie. Why are you doing quotes and scary? I was scared sometimes. Mm-hmm. Russell just rolled his eyes at me. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. <sighs> it's an art film with moments of horror. Well, I guess that's probably true. But I didn't know that going in. Like, the, the trailer makes it Dang. look like it's a straight scary movie. Yeah. Like, I was scared watching the trailer. Well, I can um... see. I feel like this is one of those movies where the trailer probably showed all the good shit. Yeah. And then the rest of it was just kind of like, oh, okay. But, um, so yeah, so I was really excited that Jake Gyllenhaal was in it because I really like him. Um, and I actually like loved how obnoxious his character is. Yes. <laughs> like yes. I, I love how obnoxious all of their characters are because it's so, Absolutely. it's such an exaggerated reality of like what the art exhibition world is. <laughs> it's it's all stuff that I swear to God I've heard at least one artist that's really full of themselves at least say out loud once. Like people in the art world, they say things <laughs> <laughs> that are so ridiculous. I'm so tired of white space. I know. Like who says that? <laughs> My uh, my uh, college professor in my portfolio class told me I had too much white space in my design. So people do say that. See, everybody's heard it at least once. I, really I got very interesting position. technique. <laughs> like I got a version of that from my art teacher one time. <sighs> I just he I except I got I just don't understand your technique. That's what I got, and he gave me a B because okay. he didn't like that I made swirls. Douche. In an expressionism project, but it's fine. <laughs> what the? Uh, I, I, I uh, used my hands too. Like I used my hands with charcoal to make some swirls, and he didn't like it, so he gave me a B for God, swirls. The art world is so fucked. Yeah, that's it, so. That's why, like, just the way they all talk to each other, and they're just all full of hot air. It's 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 so accurate. It's oh my gosh, I love scary that sweater on you. Corn, corn, what is it? Corn flour looks really good on you. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so should we give it like a little summary like of what the movie's about so that people who like refuse to watch it? Before we get into that, Jade said something about how it's an exaggeration of the art world. Like, yes, it is an exaggeration of the art world, but it is 100% truthful. Like it is an yes. exaggeration yes. and it is also not an exaggeration. <laughs> Yeah, like it's it's supposed. I feel like it's supposed to be a caricature of the art community, mm-hmm. but it's so accurate that it's almost a meta caricature. Oh yeah. no, it's definitely you know? based on truth. That's funny because you could tell with the right. I, at least I feel like you could tell like so. At least some of these people had like actual experience being around those type of people. <laughs> <laughs> you know who wrote it? You know who wrote it? Rococo. It was Coco. Really. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just I'm, I'm just making it up, but like everything happened to that girl, and it's that I think I think you know how like oh. authors put themselves in stories. I think mm-hmm. the writer of the movie is represented in the Coco character. Oh I'm, yes, no, absolutely, I agree. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So maybe the writer was just like an art assistant somewhere or something, and then like 
got fired five times or however many times Coco lost her job and then <laughs> went for a a body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was okay. so funny. Did you so, know, poor girl. Fuck me. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> So the premise of the movie, the premise of the movie is there's this girl named Josephine and she works for this bitchy art dealer lady and Josephine's kind of get in trouble at work or whatever. And she, I don't know. She sucks her job or something. I don't know. Her but boyfriend she ends- breaks up with her. She's not going to date an artist because they're already in a relationship. With their art mm-hmm. or whatever. Maybe. Dramatic. Yeah. She's kind of dramatic. Okay. She you is. know, like you start off feeling sorry for her, but then I'm just like, you know what? Fuck like, you. Oh, poor girl. She's going through so much hell. She finds a dead body in the in her apartment building building. She shows up late to work. She's like, I'm so sorry. And then everybody's just like, it's your fault. She's just like, it's not my fault. I found a dead body. Like life's going crazy right now. Well, you know what's funny? When that happened, I turned to Bryce because he was doing the same thing and he was like, ooh, she's being a bitch for like demoting her. And I'm like, well, I don't remember her calling in and telling anybody she was going to be late either. There's (laughs) also that. So I was like, don't feel bad for her. You have a cell phone, use it. (laughs) Right? Right. This is the 1980s. You didn't need to find a pay phone. You didn't have to have a quarter. (laughs) You know called no show. That's grounds for termination. Right. And this is Los Angeles. Literally everyone has a phone. Like, I'm Mm -hmm. pretty sure even their homeless have phones. Even Jake Gyllenhaal has a flip phone for some goddamn reason. Yeah. Which, okay, by the way, my only gripe with this movie, if that guy is so successful, why does he have such a shitty phone? If that guy is that successful, which I'm assuming he's successful. Yeah, I'd like to How does he have out. such a shitty phone? Like, yeah, I mean, everybody right. else has, like, iPhones and shit. Mm-hmm. He's got a <laughs> damn flip phone. We're trying to go over plot, but... I mean, I guess <laughs> maybe he's trying to be, like, one of those, like, ugh, iPhones are so mainstream. Mm. I mean, he seems like the type. So Josephine, yeah, Josephine finds this dead dude in the hallway in her apartment building, and because she's a nosy bitch, she, like... <laughs> goes into his apartment and finds all of this like brilliant artwork and like one of the Ooh. things that she finds out she goes back to his apartment because the guy that owns the building is just like yeah well, we've got to throw all his stuff away you know he was an artist right like and his wishes were for everything to be thrown out and destroyed crazy huh and she's just like mm-hmm. okay bye and then she like hears the cat meowing and she like walks in there and there's like everywhere it reminded me of my old apartment (laughs) i was just like oh that's the fucking life so she finds this art and she starts showing it to um her buddies in the art community including jake gyllenhaal's character she shows it to him and they and instantly they think it's brilliant and it's just this the most brilliant artwork ever yeah, visionary, I think, was a term they threw around a lot. And, and he said, like, some word that's, like, an SAT word, like, I'm in, 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 embroiled, no, like, embossed or something. Yeah, and like, it was some just crazy like, ass word. Shut up, you pretentious shit bag. I know. <laughs> it's so honest. It's such an honest portrayal of the art community. <laughs> But let's talk about how she, like, okay, that dead guy's house, Josephine, like, straight up, like, breaks into his house. I mean, she doesn't break in because the door's open, but she goes in there, she she steals his art, Mm -hmm. like, because it was supposed to be destroyed. So she took everything. And then... that shit. Yeah. Then her boss finds out about it and kind of, like, blackmails her into, like, letting her in on the deal. And then they, like, proceed to, like, sell this dead guy's art because everybody loves it. So then basically, like, uh, bad shit starts happening, and people start dying, and art starts basically, like, killing people, which I thought was, like, the coolest thing ever. Yes. Yeah, that was pretty rad. <laughs> I wanted more art death. Art death. <laughs> death by art. I was telling Bryce, I was like, one of the neat, the neat things about it was I liked how there was a lot of shots in the movie where it was kind of, like, from the perspective of the art. You yeah. notice that, like a lot of the camera shots and stuff, was it, it was like you were the art looking at people looking at you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the the shots of the sphere whenever people are like looking in on the little holes where you put your arms in and stuff, and and like people like looking in there. Those were like very tasteful. <laughs> we're talking about art and Jade. What it would be like if Sorry. one of those pictures behind you like came alive, <laughs> like they do in the movie, and it's just kind of like, hey, Jade. <laughs> 
I mean, hopefully that wouldn't kill me. And there's also, like, I love the shots of the sphere because there's no, like, camera reflection in that silver ball in yeah. any shots of it, which I thought was, like, a really great work of editing and, and use of camera. It was just, like, any scene with the sphere and stuff, you just saw the reflection of the gallery or the museum. You didn't see, there wasn't any of just like, oops, I see a camera. That was pretty rad. Mm -hmm. It was. So like the artist that's dead, they're selling all his art. His name's like Vitral Dees or something. And like all of his art's like really freaky deaky looking anyway. Like it's all like tortured people. A lot of them don't have like eyes and shit. That was that are like the faces or, or something are just kind of smudged just a bit. Yeah, and I think the eyes was the theme, a theme in the movie too, because there's a point where somebody's getting murdered or something, where it's a painting with no eyes, and then it gets eyes, and I was like, ooh, what the hell? And mm-hmm. then there's another part where, where there's like a the, picture. The, the self-portrait in the in the apartment whenever Josephine's looking at the art, and it's of the, the artist looking straight forward, and as soon as she unrolls some of the art and starts looking at it, the picture cocks its eyes to the side and starts staring at her like oh side yeah glaring her just being like bitch there's also like a really big graffiti type mural like street mural in one of the scenes but i can't remember yeah. what scene oh i didn't oh, remember it's whenever bryson bryson's stealing the art out of the crates whenever he's supposed to be taking it to the warehouse right yeah. before he dies and there's the the graffiti eyes watching him in the background there's the eyes of the doll that open whenever um Bon Bon, Don Don, John. Don Don. Can we talk about Don Don? (laughs) I fucking love Don Don, the character. Like, (laughs) I hate him, but I love him. Like, yeah. This is exquisite. That's trash. You know what else I really loved about the movie is all of, like, the references that that you get to the art world. Like, big things. Like, that big silver thing that people were sticking their arms into that Mm -hmm. felt like kind of a callback to the big bean in uh, I think it's Chicago Mm -hmm. or something. And uh, that by that guy, Anish Kapoor, and then they had velvet buzzsaw the band. And I was just, and I immediately was just like, that's gotta be a callback to velvet underground Mm -hmm. and like Andy Warhol and all that. And then, you know, and then, like, the graffiti stuff, like, I mean, that kind of made me think, not necessarily the style itself, but just, like, maybe, like, some kind of, like, call to Banksy and shit. You know, so it just felt like there were all these, like, little call-outs to the art world, Mm -hmm. and I was, like, I was eating it up the whole time. I was just like, oh! (laughs) Yes, get Yeah, I was yeah, I'm burning out so hard right now. That was, that was the cool thing about the movie, because all of the art that was in the movie, like the art that was made for the movie, it felt very legitimate. Like, it mm-hmm. felt yeah. like the stuff that was, like, made for the movie could have been in a museum. Yeah. And it makes me wonder, I need to look into it more, it makes me wonder if they hired, like, what art artists they hired to actually do the art for the movie, mm-hmm. you know? Especially some of the graffiti stuff at the end. Ooh. I was like, oh, that's really neat. I loved that graffiti killed her. I know. I like, also liked right... that graffiti thing in the background of one of the scenes when she's first walking into the building and it just says art. Mm. <laughs> it just says art in the background. Yeah. Yeah. And it, she dies right after she's like making fun of her like now ex boyfriend for leaving the studio Hayes to go back to his like art collective or whatever. And she's just like, what's the purpose of making art if nobody sees it? And she's just like ragging on him for having graffiti art. And then she dies by graffiti art. So poetic. So good. Ugh. Also, I love how like she didn't really. So that that particular death was really cool to me because like that uh, mural was re- behind her the whole time. And she like wasn't really paying attention to it. So that's when it like morphed into like the gallery and that's Mm -hmm. when she decided to start looking at everything. And I was like, that bitch, Josephine. I was like, oh, what? It's not art unless it's like in a gallery. Is that what you're saying? You stupid Mm -hmm. bitch. I was out by the end of the movie. I was so pissed at her. Like I was so pissed at her because like I, I really kind of felt bad for her at the beginning of the movie. And then by the end I was like, go ahead. I don't even care anymore. Just take her. Just take her. (laughs) How you going to die, bitch? (laughs) I also thought it was super interesting the way that, like, there was a difference between the way that people who were artists saw the work 
by mm-hmm. this this guy, the guy, the dead guy, and uh, people who were like trying to make money off of it, like the dealers and the buyers and stuff. Mm-hmm. When the collectors were looking at it, they were just like super excited about how like marketable it was and how like people were just gonna like snap it all right up. But like, there's two artists in the the movie. One of them's name is Pierce. He's played by uh, John Malkovich. Mm-hmm. I can't so I remember. Love, I Damrish. love Pierce. What was the name of the other one? Damrish. D- D- Damrish. Damrish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's a scene actually where they're doing a a, a gallery opening for the Deese Works. They're they're showing it for the first time, hoping to get buyers for them. Where Damrish and Pierce are are looking at the art, and they're kind of both kind of staring at it and having a moment because it's like speaking to them. And I think it's speaking to them in like a different way than it's speaking to everyone else. Like they kind of love it, but I think they're smart enough and they know enough about actually creating something that they're also kind of scared of it in a weird way. Mm -hmm. Like you always get that vibe. They're the only two that seems like actually disturbed by it. Like they don't really want to be around it. Like I think they end up leaving the exhibition early because they're both just like, yeah, I got to go. (laughs) Like They just don't want any part of it. Those two in Coco are the only ones to survive because they actually separate themselves from the art and from the greed that's taking place with the art. Like Coco, it's just because she's naive and stupid and a little bit of a gossip and just wants a better job. (laughs) Let's face it, maybe where somebody isn't getting killed, murdered by art. Yeah, so like Pierce and Damrish are, are the ones that are just like, something's going on here. I need to remove myself from this situation. Like, Damrish actually removes himself from this situation, and then Redora tells Pierce, you've only made, like, two paintings since being sober. Go to my beach house. Come back and tell you you do something for yourself. And she's motivated by marketing and making money because his stuff sells. And she's just like, if you can go back and find your muse and start painting again, I can sell your shit. She's not really, like, in the interest of create because you're an artist and it feeds your soul one thing the movie talks about a lot too i think is like the greed of collectors because i know a lot of people will see art not for art but like as an investment Mm -hmm. and i thought it was really shitty of them to like try to like take some of the pieces and hide them away and not tell anybody about them because they knew if they got quote quote discovered later people were going to pay like a premium to be able to have something that's so rare Mm -hmm. and it's just like doesn't that make you feel shitty? Like, what if you were like a super famous artist and because the artists don't get the money from that kind of a thing, you know what I mean? Especially yeah. in this case where he's dead, like yep. the only people that are profiting off of off of it are going to be those sleazy fucking collectors. I don't know. All those people pissed me off. I was is this, <laughs> like, I was super satisfied when they all died. Like, that's bad. But I was just like, fuck you guys. Good. I'm glad. The only people in that movie that I really liked were were Damrish and Pierce. Yeah, I loved Pierce. He was so great. Mm -hmm. He cracked me up. I was just like, that's trash. (laughs) (laughs) So I was rewatching it this morning just so that way I could get like a little bit of a refresher. And David came home from jujitsu and he's just like, what's this? And I was like, this is Velvet Buzzsaw. This is what we're talking about today. I'm just like, and I'm playing on my Switch, like playing video games, just kind of like looking up every now and then just to be like, Okay, yeah, cool. That happened. That happened. Oh yeah. Like like rewatching the intro into it was like because <gasps> the intro into it is like this stop motion painting title open and every death is in that. Cause like the monkey, like if you rewatch the intro and stuff, it goes over every death and how like the movie goes through it. Cause you've got the blood spill and the footsteps, the 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 paint going into the eye. You've got a hand reaching out. Um, you've got the smashed glasses and the figure coming back, being backlit. And then, like, you've got, like, the title Velvet Buzzsaw and then the bleeding paint. Huh. Yeah. Can I just say my favorite death in the whole movie was the little buzzsaw to the neck. Like, her tattoo coming to life or whatever. Oh, that was my favorite one. Yes. That was, my favorite. Yes. That and was, I totally had forgotten about the tattoo by that point. But I was like, there's no way this bitch is surviving. She's done too much horrible shit. And I was just like, mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, are we going to get into like, what is art now? Like, it's going to be, it's going to be some random piece of like thing that you wouldn't think of, but it, it's like art. But I totally forgot about that tattoo. So 
what happened. You know, the painting that she had in her room where there was the two shadows with the lady sitting next to the cat at that last scene where the buzzsaw goes off. There's the two shadows of the cactus and she's sitting there and her cat comes over and sits next to her. That's when the buzzsaw goes because she became the living art of that painting she just got rid of. Oh, wow. I never even thought of that. Oh, that's like whenever she was looking at it and stuff and she was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, that's a Sphinx cat. She has a Sphinx cat and that cat goes outside. And I was like, bitch, don't you dare sit down because it like, anything with that kind of stuff like yes get rid of all that art you schedule an appointment you get that stuff lasik like this shit on your arm which the 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 tattoo was uh no art no death no death no art something and like then she sits down and her cat comes and sits next to her and that's whenever they like pan around and like show that scene from the same frame that the painting is done and kind of like swivels around and shows her back and that's when the the buzzsaw goes and drills into her shoulder i was really upset because i really wanted that buzzsaw to decapitate i thought this was gonna happen (laughs) i know me too yeah off with her head maybe it wasn't i was just do it do it (laughs) Uh, yeah i was definitely rooting for the art i was rooting for it kill kill did you guys did you guys kind of get like a slight future vibes though too the only reason i the only reason I say that is because of that installation that had like the hobo robot. Oh hobo yeah, yeah. And I, I was like, I okay, can't so, save you. So I was like, is this like slight future, like like enough where we have like the technology to have like humanoid robots? Maybe after they've become like not they've they've already gone through their fad stage. People are starting to throw them in the trash. So this artist like picked one up Chobit style and then made it into an art exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, is I he gonna fall that. in love with the hobo man <laughs> <laughs> that's the fanfic of this <laughs> oh, I see you Ruckus 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 Harley Harley Ruckus oh no bye Harley sorry puppy Harley wanted to be a part of the podcast she can't be <laughs> she doesn't have opposable thumbs them's the rules what if I get in a horrific accident where my thumbs co- get like, pfft, am I off the podcast? No, you're grandfathered in. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, okay. What was I saying? Something about the art, the deaths. Uh... Oh, oh, the f- slight, slight future vibe that I got in it, but like not so far in the future that everything <laughs> looked different. Just like far enough where like. You can still have flip phones. <laughs> I was. Maybe they're cool again. Maybe they're retro now. We don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Bet me. I bet you here in like five years, people are going to have flip phones. Watch. I mean, they're already doing like the folding phones, which are kind of like flip phones. Yeah. But they just have the screen all the way up on them. Hey. Uh, That phone is like witchcraft to me. I don't understand how that works. How do you fold glass? That makes no sense to me. I think it's a plastic, but like what gets me is that the crease doesn't bust. You know what I mean? Like you could fold it, but... Yeah, I don't trust it. I feel like after a while, it's just going to break. Yeah, it just feels like a gimmick to me. It is, but I mean, honestly, like, how long do you keep your phone anyway? So I guess that's what they're banking on. By the time it, like, falls apart, you're going to want something new anyway, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I hold on to my phones for quite a long time, so... I do, yeah. I do too, but I think Same. most people get rid of those within a couple of years. Yeah. Which is crazy to me. Which was your favorite death? Wait. Yeah, what was your favorite death? <laughs> I already shared what my favorite death was, so... I mean, I'll say, like, I guess it's, it's gotta be Josephine's because it was like the most satisfying Mm -hmm. and, and also kind of like the craziest because like the gallery appeared out of nowhere and she had just basically got dumped by the other guy because he was like, I choose art, (laughs) which I thought was really cool. And plus like, it actually looked really cool. All the paint like coming down, you know, off the, off of the paintings. Also, how did she not notice that? Like, all that paint going up her legs and shit. Like, I would have been like, what the actual fuck? Like, it took her a long time. <laughs> I don't know. crawling up my thigh. That's not a hand. Right? <sighs> Whatever. I, I'm telling you. Like, she was like, I hated her at the end of the movie. I was like, you fucking suck. I was like, I hate you. So that, that one was probably my favorite. My second favorite was Don Donzo. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> Being hanged by his own fancy scarf. I liked him as a character like he was so <laughs> out there I was just like 
wow dude like you are like a character like like just the way he dressed and like just his attitude to everything I was like and I was like somebody out there is actually like this there's somebody walking around right now who is living Don Don's life <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> get him Harley get him bark 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 <laughs> Bark break brought to you by Harley. I swear, she has not barked all day. And I was like, it's going to be fine. I'll just like let her do whatever she's been doing because she hasn't barked all day. <laughs> and now something suddenly is upsetting her. Somebody's gonna... walking on the sidewalk. There's a person! I see <laughs> them! Bark, bark, bark. Well, I'm a person. <gasps> Guest star Harley. What you drinking? Um, Shinerbach Oktoberfest. <gasps> Ooh, you got more? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, okay. So, one thing I want to talk about, though, is, like, do you guys have any theories on, like, what was actually causing all the bullshit? Like, I know they said the guy was, like, he, like, he had a terrible upbringing and all that crap, but it's, like, and then he was, I think they said he was also, like, painting with his blood. Yeah. But yeah. I don't, I feel like you could probably do that. I think he killed somebody at some point or something. But I feel like. He probably killed two people because he went back and he tortured his father for days. And then, like, he spent time in that mental facility for, like, two months. And they did, or no, like, 20 years or something. And they did, like, horrible experiments on him and other patients. And he started painting with blood. And then that dude, his boss from his job, was being a real dick to him. And then that guy wound up dead with his hands tied in the middle of a field. Yeah. what no. happened there. Yeah, I definitely got, like, picture of Dorian Gray vibes from the artwork you know what i mean where it's just just like an evil evil painting like and honestly Mm. i kind of like the fact that they don't really explain the motive like there's no motive Mm -hmm. it's just evil art do you know what i mean like it's just evil like it was making me think i was just like this would be a really cool concept if somebody like had like all of these like inner demons and they just like painted them out and like put them in the paintings and then it's just like i'm free of my demons they're in the paintings now now these paintings need to be destroyed and destroy the paintings and then he dies before it happens and then people are just like let's profit off of these inner demon paintings it also makes me wonder if the art was fucking with him before he died probably right yeah no i bet like i that's kind of what i just kind of assumed that it was And that's why he wanted it destroyed is because it started fucking with him and it killed him first before he could kill it. Yeah, I mean, he'd already started, like, destroying it. And and then, like, yeah, and then suddenly he's, like, dead. I mean, he was old, so he could have just died of natural causes. But that's not the vibe I got. No, I definitely got the the art killed him vibe. Mm -hmm. Uh, Which, you know, I guess is not as cool of a vibe. Well, technically, he could have died by natural causes if he's painting with his own blood and his art killed him. Uh, but, oh, so you, um, like a suicide type thing? Because it was his blood, and so it was, like, technically him, and then he, like, killed himself. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're trying to say? But then blood. I'm also like, is this, like, one of those, like, deal with the devil things? Mm, that would be really cool if there was a sequel, because at the end, there is that, that hobo man that's selling his art for some. Yeah. And then, like, Coco has to come back and people are just like, we need to talk to you about this art. She's just like, nope, don't want nothing to do with this shit. Or Coco comes back and she's older and wiser and she's like the expert and she's like, I've seen some things. She just got like a weird scar. (laughs) I don't know. I fight art. (laughs) I just want her to like have some kind of redemption story because I felt so fucking bad for her. Like The redemption story was moving out of L.A., because LA fucking sucks. Like, sorry to everybody that lives there and stuff. Like, I spent a month there and lived with some friends that live with live there. LA is such a trip. It's so different than Texas. Because in Texas, you could just, like, smile at somebody at the grocery store. In LA, you like, smile at somebody and they immediately look at you like, what you want? What? Why are you smiling at me? What? You think I'm going to read your script? No, fuck you. <laughs> like, don't look at me like that. How's your day going today? Well, it's a day. Ew. I'm like, god damn. Like, that actually happened. Like, I went to the grocery store to pick up some food and snacks and stuff. And I was just like, hey, how are you doing today? And she's like, well, it's a day. I'm here. Whatever. It's like, oh. Yeah, that's the, that's the toxic shit they bring to Texas. 
Mm -hmm. Stay in California. If you come to Texas, you leave that toxic bullshit behind. Okay, thank you. Right. Like, either that or it's like, welcome to Texas. This is your month class in Southern hospitality, bitches. They kind of, can we just require that? That would be great if we could have a Southern hospitality, like, initiation to Texas. I'm not saying Dallas is the best representation of that, because there are bitches in Dallas, too. Like, don't get me wrong. Go to Fort Worth. Fort Worth is a lot better. That's true. They they have cowboys there. Cute ones Fort too. Fort Worthless. Hey. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Fort Worth is cool. Like okay. I, like Stock Fort Worth yard. is cool. Yeah. yeah. Which Savannah and, changed my mind on that. Fort Worth has a really happening like art scene though that people don't mm-hmm. know about. Like a lot of the best museums. Their of course, museums the museums are amazing. Yeah, Mon Carter yeah. is probably one of my favorite museums now. Like Fuck that place yeah. is so cool. They've also got the Kimball out there. They've got the Modern. Like, they've... Like, the Modern was cool, too. Hell yeah. And the, I don't think a lot of people know that all that stuff's out there. Like, I, I guess people just think of Dallas for the art scene. But Fort Worth has, like, a really cool, really cool, like, art area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, if you guys head to Dallas at any point and you're looking for some art, you know, go to downtown Dallas. But if you have time, go to downtown Fort Worth, too. Yeah. Absolutely. You make a day of it. Hell yeah. yeah. Do the first half of the killed. day in Dallas and then finish up in Fort Worth. <laughs> Don't look at art by yourself. Yeah, bring friends. Mm-hmm. It's always better with friends because nobody died whenever there was somebody else around. As soon as somebody else left and they were alone, like like earlier today, like whenever Don Don was about to die and that girl left and she's like, okay, bye. And she walked away and stuff. And like the projector goes on and you see Deese's face. David immediately goes, that guy's that guy's about to be, get ganked. Okay, so I just want to clarify. Russell is not saying that you're going to get killed if you go to an art museum. He's just saying that's what happened to these people. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you go to an art museum by yourself and you're in that room by yourself and you see that guard walk away and one of those lights flicker, you run, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that does seem creepier to me now. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't have thought of that before, but yeah, totally. Also, I wanted that art piece to actually grab more space whenever he was sexing on Josephine and he's looking up at the Deese painting above her bed. Oh, yeah. And like the hand comes out and like almost grabs his face. I wanted the painting to actually grab his face. I was like, yes, yes, yes. And he's just like, "Ah," scoots away and he's just like, my eyes. And I was just like, no, (laughs) grab him. It was kind of weird that he stayed alive for so long, right? Is that just me? Like, it's no, it was definitely like alive, like way too long. Like, I guess the paintings had to drive him crazy first. I don't know. Like, I, I wish there was more instances of like the paintings going weird throughout the entire movie to have more of that horror element of the art. Whenever people were just like talking and bullshitting and having, I wish that like some of the art behind them moved a little bit more creepy. Like, they're trying throughout the entire time like the art is actually trying to get them and it's just like one of those moments it's just like oh you're paired up or you looked at the art and it stopped trying to get you i i just also my favorite death was the spear ah yeah you would like that one mm-hmm. she just put her hand in and i was just like you're gonna lose an arm don't touch it please do not touch the art <laughs> right. and then and the moral of the story, kids, is don't touch the art. <laughs> or else it's going to touch you. Yep. And you might not like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was also another satisfying death, because I didn't like that lady either. But Jake Gyllenhaal's character actually didn't, like, hate him. Like, even though he was kind of, like, snobbish and pretentious about it, it seemed like he actually cared about the art. Like, whenever he wrote that bad critique for that Josephine's ex boyfriend or whatever he like Mm -hmm. felt bad about it because he actually like liked the art and stuff i feel like he actually appreciated it maybe that's why he stayed alive for so long like he wasn't just using it as like a a means to make money he was actually researching and trying to like show appreciation for it i don't know yeah but he was still complicit in hiding some of it so no but and that's when he died whenever he was like i'm not gonna just burn this i'm not gonna like get rid of it i'm just i'm gonna store it for later Mm-hmm. See, that's what he should have done. That's what I was saying that whole time, like when he's passed the keys to Coco and shit. I was like, no, don't do it. I was like, just go burn it somewhere. Like, there's like still. You're a- already in the hills of like the California landscape where nobody else is. Just be like, bonfire. 
No, so don't better. start bonfires in California. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> it's not a boy or a girl. It's a demon painting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you should have done it right then and there. I'm just saying he could have found a fireplace somewhere or like a trash can. I mean, anything. I don't know. Like he could have destroyed it. And I think he would have been okay. Like that's my theory on the canon of like this movie. I think that. I think he, he fucked up by going to the stage. Too late. Huh? He figured stuff out too late. I don't think he figured it out. I mean, he figured out that it was killing people, but I don't think he figured out that, like, he it shouldn't was... try to profit off of that art, even if it is in the future. Mm-hmm. Did y'all think that the, the scientist lady was going to die? No. No. Like. Did you think she was going to die? I thought so. Because as soon as she took the little chip off and she's just like, something's weird about this art and the painting starts to bleed, I was like, ooh, she's going to get it. She's going to get ganked. She's going to die. Die. And then she did it. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. Because again, I think she was like, just she's a the like, art. Benef- like benefiting from the art. She was just doing her job, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think that's why it probably didn't kill her. Or maybe it did kill her and we just don't know, you know? In the sequel. Right. Either that or she knew, like, doing her research, she was just, oh, yeah, maybe she, no, because there is a line in there because she was just like, I'm glad to be done with, I like, I don't want to go back to those pieces and stuff. I didn't catalog them. I just kind of, like, researched a little little bit and stuff. And she's like, I don't want to, she's like, I don't want anything to do with it. I think there was a line in there that was something along the lines that she was just like, "Mm -mm, nope, nope, nope. Yeah, they definitely creeped her out. You totally got that vibe where she's like, I'm glad they're gone. Mm -hmm. Also, one of the freakiest fucking scenes in the whole movie, I think, to me, was when he was in that, like, soundproof room where he was supposed to be, like, reviewing another exhibit. And then, like, he started hearing all of his critiques about, like, other people's art. And I was just like, holy shit. I was like, at first I thought, I was like, well, that's kind of fucked up that this other artist is calling him out or whatever because at first I was like maybe this is the exhibit like maybe they're just this is like a fuck you exhibit specifically for him (laughs) and then when you find out that like nothing's been playing this whole time and it's just all in his head sorry the computer crashed yeah like to me that was one of the freakiest scenes that's what saved his life because he should have died then whenever he was alone in that room reviewing the art as soon as the guy left the weird freaky shit started happening because he wasn't around and that room was about to fucking kill him until that door opened. And the guy was just like, sorry, our computer crashed. He was this close to death, this close to death. He was going to die by his own bad reviews. I still think that the art. So I feel like the art is judging is like passing judgment on people this entire movie. Right. Yeah. And so I think that his character was the like the only character where it was like, I'm going to try to give you a chance to save yourself and realize how much of an asshole you are being. And then, <laughs> and then he just doesn't learn his lesson. And then he that's why he dies. Because he doesn't fucking die until he's trying to store the fucking art in the storage unit or whatever. And then Hobo and Man comes theory. around and just like, I can't save you. Waddle, 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 waddle. Yeah, that thing was freaky already. I, I like, lost my shit when he was, like, on the crutches, like, running down the hallway, and then he took, takes the crutches and, like, bangs on the storage unit. So I was like, oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then poor Coco finds his body and is just like, oh, fuck me! Yeah, poor Coco. Mm. I hope you she know finds what I will a good say. therapist in Mich- Michigan. <laughs> right. What You know what I will say is, as far as, like, horror movies go, I wasn't scared of this one same but i definitely had fun watching yes. this one like it was a it was a fun movie like i loved it it's one of those great like horror ish movies where you're just like kill them die yeah <laughs> you're rooting for the i guess like the murderous art here is the good guy <laughs> and everybody else is just bad guys and you're just like can't wait for this bitch to die it's true no, this is good. I, I could totally watch this again. There were only a couple parts that made me jump, and then I got pissed. Like, the cat jump scare at one point. I was like, fuck yeah. you, cat. Because I don't like jump scares. That's why I don't like a lot of horror movies. But it was just that one jump scare, and I could totally go back and watch it now because I know where it's at. Nah, I really enjoyed it. I, I And even Bryce, he really liked it. He thought, he's like, this is really good. This is really good. And you know how picky mm-hmm. he is in movies. So, oh, just yeah, like on a movie-level basis, I don't... I thought it was really good. Mm-hmm. I think what really helped was having such a strong cast of great actors that really delivered 
in their roles. Because I think if you took the same movie and you got meh actors, like it would have just been a horrible shit show. That's probably true. Because they, they all took it like super serious. Mm-hmm. Like they did a great job. And can we talk about the ending with John Malkovich as Pierce just making art that's being washed away, doing everything that these art critics hate about like amateur ish art? What's the purpose of making art if it's not gonna, if you're not gonna see it? Like nobody wants to see anything so childish. You need to make something so we can profit off of it. And he's just doing swirls in the sand as the tide's coming in where it's going to be washed away. Nobody else is seeing it. And he's just creating for the sake of creating for himself. Fuck yes. Yes, that was a super satisfying moment to me too. And you know, it's funny when the movie was starting to end, I was like, oh man, did they forget about Pierce? Because I never forgot about Pierce. Mm-hmm. And and I was so satisfied to see like how they ended stuff with him. And you're right. That was like, it was like a happy ending. Like the whole movie like had such a great happy ending. It was awesome. Except for that one hobo selling the Deese art. You're just like, mm, bitch is gonna die. You're profiting off of bad art. You're You're profiting off of demon art. Don't do it. And then it's Pierce just being like, I'm going to make swirls in the sand with the stick. Man, can you imagine him come back town and be like, what the fuck happened? I know. I know. But I like quit drinking but for this. That's why, that was one of the reasons why I loved Pierce so much. Is like he was, Yes, he was jaded, but like he eventually, he got there, man. Yeah. He started doing stuff just for him, and it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Damn Rich, so, too, because he was Pierce. Yeah. That's why, like, Pierce and Damrish were, like, the best. Because, like, whenever you first meet Damrish and stuff, he's just like, you know, this isn't my scene. This isn't anything. Like, I was living on the street six months ago, and now I'm in Miami showing my art at a giant convention. Like, what's going on here? Then at the end of the movie and stuff, he's just like, yeah, I'm going back to my collective. Fuck this shit. Fuck your haze, your greed, and everything. Like, I want no part of it. Also the fight in the apartment in the penthouse apartment where Damrish is sitting there making eggs watching (laughs) watching Murph and Josephine have an argument (laughs) he's just they're just like okay making eggs in the background it was so great also that one line any admiration I had for your art has completely evaporated you know what my favorite line in the movie was all art is a little bit dangerous Mm-hmm. or all art is dangerous or whatever she said mm-hmm. i was just like fuck yeah i'm sure like bryce liked it he's not like an artist but i feel like if you're like an artist this movie means so much more to you like mm-hmm. i i i got like, i i was so happy like it made me so happy mm-hmm. yeah it was such a it was a good one it was a very it was one of those movies where i was just like eh you know i'll go ahead and watch this but i don't really know like if it's gonna be like up my alley or what you know because like I said, all I knew is that it was a creepy art movie. That's all I knew. And so mm-hmm. I'm going in there expecting like Suspiria or something, you know, with like an evil art school full of witches, you know, or something, you know, like, cause I hear creepy art and I instantly think of Suspiria because that's like one of my favorite horror movies of all time is Suspiria. Not the remake though. I do not like the remake. When I watched this one, I was just like, you know, I'm so pissed off at how much I like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mad at how much I like this movie because I was not expecting to like it as much as I like Suspiria, but I totally do. Oh, I man. might even like this movie a little bit more than Suspiria. I I, I absolutely dug this. I, I really enjoyed it. Watching the the farce that is the LA art world. Yes. And cheering for their death. I'm so distracted because Harley's in the room. Hi, Harley. Harley. I know. Harley. She, she busted out of the room. I put her in the bedroom and she busted out of there. She just like walked up to me and she was like, hey, mom. And she just sat down for pets. And I was like, I guess I'm going to pet you now. <laughs> over there chewing on her bone. Harley, where's Bryce? He, I kicked him out of the house today. Oh. I was just like, you know what I need? I need some alone time. Can you go play with your friends? <laughs> so he's over Bryce at David's right now. Huh? Oh, he's over at David's. Okay. Yeah, no. He's at David's. Yeah, I just hadn't had a, like a day by myself, and I'm, I'm such an intro- I'm such an introvert that sometimes I just need to be away from Bryce, and I love him, but I just sometimes just want to be by myself, so I can like stare at the wall or something, with not, without having to like explain. What are you looking at? The I, I wall, duh. 
<laughs> well, that's why I love uh, where I live. So ever since I moved out of my parents' house, like I've had roommates that work on Saturdays. Like I've always had roommates that worked on Saturdays. When I lived with Daniel and Jessica, they were always working Saturdays and the kids wouldn't be there. So I'd always have Saturdays home alone. And then now here with this new roommate that I'm living with, she works Saturdays. So I'm here alone on Saturday. Like I always get like some time to myself on Saturday. So, and it's nice. And it gives me a chance to be creative without anybody else watching me. You know what I mean? Not that my roommate watches me, but like a lot of the time if she and I are both home together and one of us starts creating something, the other one will start creating something. And so we'll end up, it's nice to like be able to sit there and create with somebody else like right next to you. But it's also like, I feel like some of my best stuff is done when I'm alone, Mm. you know? Yeah. I feel like it's because like, it's, there's nothing around to interrupt your, your own thought process. Yeah. You're just responsible and you're just responsible for your own self. Like when, when Bryce is here, when somebody else is here, I, I almost feel like I have to entertain them for some reason or like have to make sure they're having an okay time or that we're doing something we both want to do or whatever and that's on me but like I can't get past it so sometimes it's just nice to just have a day to recharge and be by myself and just like you know roam around the house (laughs) like doing nothing I don't know I don't even know what I do here by myself except just like like I'll watch tv or I'll like be on my phone or I'll do this or I'll just like randomly go and poke stuff at my art desk I don't know <laughs> like, I mean it also helps to like clear your head though right just yeah. like having nothing to do and kind of making yourself bored is what's gonna like make you want to go and create stuff at least for me so what has everybody been working on this week Russell goes first Russell goes first Russell you go first okay I I have been just drawing outfits, not really doing dynamic poses or working on anatomy stuff, just just playing around with different outfits. Cause there's been a few times that I've like worked on anatomy or, or poses or whatever. I'm just like, okay, now to dress it. What do, what do I want to throw on this person? I'm like, I don't know. So I've just been drawing outfits this week and trying to keep my head above water emotionally, playing a lot of video games. How about you, Savannah? I have not done shit this week. <laughs> I'm going to be real honest. I, uh, mm, like, I've been, my anxiety has been very uh, present this week, unfortunately, mm. uh, which actually doing art would probably help with that, but I just can't make myself do it. Uh, so that's fun. Uh, I, I, I bought some glitter on Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Like, uh, I've been looking into um, doing those resin pours or whatever. Have you seen, like, they they have, like, silicone molds or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you, like, put stickers and glitter and crap in it and then, like, pour the resin and make stuff. So I'm going to look into that because I have some stickers that I want to make into coasters. So it's kind of like a more of a personal project for me just because I want some custom something. And I'd rather make it myself than pay somebody to make it, you know? But if I end up liking it, it might be something I might consider adding to the Etsy shop. But that's pretty much it. What about you, Jade? So I also haven't really done shit this week. Um, <laughs> but I I mostly have been playing around with that paint that I got. There's another paint that I got along with the Black 3.0 that's called Chrome. Or it's called Mirror. I'm sorry. And it's literally like liquid mirror. And the thing is, it's like like a solvent. So I can't use it inside. I have to use it outside only. I'm waiting to use it. But apparently, it works best on plastic. So I'm trying to find something cool and plastic that I can paint with that mirror stuff. Because once you paint it on there, it literally becomes a mirror. And when oh. you um, and when you pour it out of the bottle, it look you can like see your reflection very clearly in the paint. Like it's it's so cool. So I haven't been doing any pieces, but I have definitely been playing with paint this week. So and nice. like I said, I sent you guys pictures of the blacks that I've been playing with, and I'm oh god, I'm so excited. It's like completely renewed inspiration in me and like I cannot wait to start painting with it (laughs) so that's probably what's gonna what I'm gonna be doing throughout this next week is just painting stuff with that super matte black and it wasn't very expensive either Mm -hmm. 
I think it was like 20 bucks and it's like a really large tube. So yeah, it looked nice. By the way, if anybody here, if anybody listening to this is interested in Black 3.0, you can get it at this website called, I think, Culture Hustle, culturehustle.com or something like that. And Mm -hmm. if you've got the time, you should definitely Google the story behind uh, Stuart Simple, the artist who makes it, and uh, his fight with Anish Kapoor over Vonka (laughs) Black. So if 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 you've never if you've never heard about any of that, you should definitely look it up because it's a very it's very it's art drama it's art world drama but it's it's the best kind of drama. <laughs> do they die? Do what? No, nobody dies. Die. But Damn. if you go to Stuart Simple's website mm-hmm. and you buy Black 3.0, there's a little disclaimer at the bottom of each of his products that says that you are not associated with Anish Kapoor and will not give this paint to Anish Kapoor. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, the I mean, y'all know that story, right? Have y'all heard anything? Oh my I god. Think okay. I have. So, so, we'll just do I'll just do a quick reader's digest about it. So, basically, Vonta Black. Do you know about Vonta Black? Yeah. It's like the world's most dark black and it absorbs like I think 99.96% of all light. It's like one of the darkest substances you can it's like it's crazy it's crazy dark. So um this artist Anish Kapoor, the guy who did the big bean in um I think Chicago, he bought the exclusive rights to use Vonta Black and nobody else like basically hogging it all for himself so that no other artist could use Vonta oh. Black. Well, it pissed off Stuart Simple, and Stuart Simple is another artist, and so he made the world's pinkest pink, and he marketed it as saying, everyone in the world can buy this paint except Anish Kapoor. And then on top of that, Anish Kapoor, he ended up getting a sample of the pinkest pink, and he posted a picture on his Instagram um, with his finger dipped in the pink, and it's a middle finger, just saying, fuck you, pretty much. That is some petty bullshit. I know, I know. It's it's so fucking great. But to be, but despite all of this, the paint is really, actually, really good quality paint. Like it's it's very nice. It doesn't show brush strokes, which is crazy to me. Ooh. Yeah, like it literally, it just mats down brush strokes. It's so crazy. Wow. So yeah, that's the Reader's Digest. There's a lot more to it, but you should definitely give it a Google, and mm-hmm. you should support Stuart Simple because it's the right thing to do. Yay, he, petty art bullshit. He, he thinks color should be for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what's funny is all of this doesn't even matter now because now there's a substance that's darker than Vonta Black. So it doesn't even matter now. Mm. That's crazy because that color right there it looks like it shouldn't exist. So I can't even imagine something darker than that. Yeah. So that was my little side thing. But yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'll be doing this week is playing around with Black 3.0. Well, as soon as I get off of here, I'm going to go, I'm turning around right now and I'm going to go paint because like, fuck me, I suck and I need to go do it. Like, that's my attitude to myself right now because I have not done anything all week and every day I was like, I'm going to do something after work and then I just fucking didn't. Mm. Yeah. So. All right. Well, good show, guys. Happy Halloween season. Enjoy your spooky season. Spooky season. Yay. Watch Velvet Buzzsaw again. Yes, go watch Velvet Buzzsaw. It's streaming on Netflix. It should still be streaming on Netflix by the time yeah. this episode airs. But if not, it's definitely worth renting somewhere. Mm-hmm. Or if you just don't want to, just watch the trailer and you'll get all the spooky stuff. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not a lot of the art drama, but spooky shit. Uh... All right, y'all. Talk to you later then. Right. Okay, love you, me. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. bye. Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening to the first episode in our four-part series for the spooky season. We hope you enjoyed it. Please join us next time when we will have a very special guest to discuss creativity and filmmaking in the horror film genre. You can find us on Instagram at fanbrush.podcast. Until next time, keep creating. Farewell. Farewell.